All right, hello and welcome. Pastor John here, and I uh, want to welcome you again to our Going Through the Bible series. And today, we're going to be looking at the Song of Solomon, also known as the Song of Songs. So please open your Bible, go to the Song of Solomon, or maybe your Bible is Song of Songs, chapter 2, verses 3 to 6. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 3 to 6. All right. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, 3 to 6. And here we read. Like the finest apple tree in the orchard is my lover among other young men. I sit in his delightful shade and taste his delicious fruit. He escorts me to the banquet hall. It's obvious how much he loves me. Strengthen me with raisin cakes. Refresh me with apples, for I am weak with love. His left arm is under my head, and his right arm embraces me. God bless you in your first word. Staying true. Staying true. All right, so this is the last book um, in, the, in what we call wisdom literature in the Old Testament. Uh, uh, the Song of uh, Solomon is also known as the Song of Song of Songs. It's written by King Solomon um, around about circa 971 BC. The theme is keeping God's covenant. So God's covenant um, is to be kept. And then there's another uh, uh, sub-theme, a minor theme, and that is the marriage between man and woman uh, as a gift from God. A man and a woman as gift from God. So this is not an allegory. Um, sometimes people come with, oh gosh, many different ideas, um, but it's real people and real events. While we do not know exactly um, who or what um, is um, uh, the people are, uh, these are real people and real events. So we just don't want to take it any other way and... Um, uh, as we hold you know, to the biblical, to the inerrancy of Bible, every word of the Bible is true, from the first word of Genesis to the uh, last word of the book of Revelation. All 66 books of the Bible, every word is true and um, is uh, given to us by God, by our Lord Jesus Christ. So just that's how we, all st we start. So it's not an allegory, these are real people and real events. So we recall when we read this passage, Genesis chapter 1 and 2, uh, where it says, Be fruitful and might multiply, Genesis one twenty eight, And God plants a garden in 2 verse 8 and uh, 2.24 to 25. So let's read Genesis here, one twenty eight. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it, Rain over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. God bless you in your word. In Genesis 2, verse 8. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. God bless you in your word. In Genesis 2, 24 to 25. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother, and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. God bless me of his word. So the topic here is staying true to each other, um, husband and wife, uh, man and woman, and to God. To stay true to each other as husband and wife, and to God. So... Let's look at the few verses here. Verse 3, the apple tree is the sweetest of all the trees in the woods. It's the idea here um, that something uh, is represented or something of value uh, is um, uh, referred to here. Something is valuable, an apple tree. Verse 4, this is the only occurrence um, in the Old Testament. That's verse 4. Um, he scores... scores he escorts me to the banquet hall. He escorts me to the banquet hall. 
Uh, it's the only occurrence in the Old Testament. And the idea is that lovers do not shy away from showing their affection, even in public, um, they're modest. Right? That's the banquet hall idea. Verse 5. What is up with those raisin cakes? The raisin cakes are a source of refreshment. So the idea here is that staying true does refresh us, right, in heart and soul. It's refreshing, right, um, to, uh, to be truthful and another person, and knowing that another person is true to us. Verse 6 is then um, an embrace of affection, as an example. And verse 7 is a short conclusion. So it's basically um, a form of... Um, uh, refrain like you know like in a song something repeats at the end right and then uh, the, the lyrics go on and then there's a refrain again and um, right so it's a kind of form of refocusing uh, from communicating uh, the, the love uh, that the uh, the two people that they love the two people express for each other so it's also a form of staying true to each other right so, uh, all right, so what does all of this mean for you to stay true to others and to God? Stringed, staying true to others and to God. So, as believers, it means um, being true to each other brings us closer to each other. Right? When we're true with each other, it brings us closer to each other. And sometimes people have relationships or they're, you know, acquaintances or you know, people are, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of with you, but not really for you. I don't know if you've experienced that yourself, but um, really, um, that's not what the Bible tells us. And oftentimes, sometimes we have to let go or of, of uh, acquaintances, relationships, where it only goes one-sided, one direction, right? We, we, we put a lot of effort and energy into a person or maybe people even, and we get nothing in return. So it has to go both ways, right? So um, that's very important. And then being true to each other brings us closer to God. And so here's two, two wonderful examples from the New Testament. And those are uh, Simeon and Anna. So in Luke 2, um, Luke, I, I, please turn to the Bible. Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 38. Please um, read along here with me. I encourage you. Open your Bible and read along here. The Gospel of Luke and the New Testament, chapter 2, verses 25 to 38, of people um, of being true uh, to God. So, okay. I repeat it again. Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 38. We read, At that time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and, he ha and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the Lord required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praising God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is the light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. 
She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshipping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. God bless me of his word. So what do we make of this here? Being true to God. Simeon and Anna, two amazing examples as Jesus is being dedicated to the Lord according to Jesus' law. So what does this mean? Uh, because God is faithful to us, so we are called to be faithful to him. Because God is faithful to us, we are called to be faithful to him. That is namely who God is. And we read that in the second letter of Timothy. So 2 Timothy 2 verse 13. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. God bless me of his word. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. So that is an encouragement for us as believers, as Christians, as we struggle with our faith at times, and maybe more often than we like to admit. You know, I struggle, you struggle, all of us, all of all Christians struggle with that. But we can hold on firmly to this truth that Jesus Jesus remains faithful um, because that is who he is. So um, such an encouragement and again a benefit of um, staying close to God and faithful to him. And God desires a personal relationship with every believer. It's God's desire. Here we read in Romans 5, 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. That is Jesus' call to us, um, uh, which is us. I'll read that again. So we were dead in sin. We were all born sinners in our broken sin state, estranged and separated from God. By default, we are, we are sinners. We are under God's wrath. Very important to understand. There's nothing good in us that can be redeemed in and apart from Jesus Christ. So look how merciful and graceful God is in Romans 5 verse 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. God bless me with his word. And so this is Jesus' call to us to stay faithful to him and just to turn to him by default, no matter what's going on. And we read that in Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 29. This is one I would, big one. I encourage you to highlight this verse. Um, one of my favorites. I, I use this one, pray this one a lot too. So it's very encouraging. Highlight this one if you, uh, if you want to. I'll read it. Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 29. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I'm humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. God bless me with his word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a blessing this is. So that's what it means, uh, staying true to God, um, and I hope you've been blessed by uh, this little passage here from the book of book of uh, Song of Solomon, also known as Song of Songs. May God bless you and keep you until next time.